Hi, welcome to Infusion Health, the podcast. I'm comedian Chris Patrick, a.k.a. Self-Proclaimed Power Man. And I'm here with my co-host and significant other, Rach. Hey, guys. Now, today, um, recently here in uh, in Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis, um, they've passed a bill for um, the use of uh, recreational marijuana. Um, they haven't, It's it's gotten through the first stage. It hasn't been finalized yet. But they have passed, and that's a, that's a good thing. But it's also a bad thing, as you know, because of the people we've had on, like Bridget and uh, Damar, about um, you know who actually sell CBD. But today we got uh, Rochelle here, and she's for calling in from Columbus, Ohio, and she's going to talk to us about the truth about CBD and essential oils. So I'm just going to bring her on the show. Rochelle, welcome to the show. Thank you. So thank uh, you for having me. Yeah, no, nah, not a problem. So we're talking about uh, the truth about essential oils and CBDs uh, and CBD. <laughs> what um, what can you tell us about what 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 are some truths about this about CBD and essential oils? And as you know, Rach is very has been avid, um has been a big big advocate of essential oils for the last what four years, five years, five. for the last five years. Yeah. Well, um, yes. I- I can tell you that I've used essential oils myself, and it sounds like um, I've come across them similar to the way Rachel has. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, for me, was life changing um, when I found them. I before I did, I thought they were hocus pocus. Mm-hmm. Um, really, <laughs> really um, didn't believe that they would change anything in my life. I felt the same way, similar about CBD, um, but for the last, gosh, 10, maybe 15 years, um, my family and I have become true believers that um, Eastern medicine and the holistic lifestyle is the right choice. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can tell you that um, I am terminally ill. Um, I have completely outlived my life expectancy and uh, we owe it to essential oils and CBD. So I've struggled with pain. I've struggled with um, my thyroid. I've struggled with so many um, challenges. And um, what I can tell you is that the research and um, all of the studies out there um, have mixed messages. So it is hard to really believe that essential oils make a difference. Mm. Um. And for me, it was just trying, just sticking my toe in the water, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a little bit of time. You know, I started with diffusing and I started with just smelling essential oils and yes. feeling the uplifting aroma and feeling my attitude change, feeling the effects of breathing it in and knowing that I went from being a total grouch and totally upset with my children to having kind of an ease of peace of mind about the end of the day and not feeling like I just wanted to crawl into a hole and disappear. Right. Um, <laughs> and knowing what the power of certain blends and certain um, mixes uh, could do. Yeah. Um, and then it became other people coming over and saying, wow, I feel different when I leave your house or I feel uplifted or I don't feel as snappy Um, and seeing that change in other people, I started to believe there was a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, then starting to buy encapsulated oils or encapsulating oils myself. Um, And it was really about using them with myself and in trial and error, if you will. And then after I became comfortable with that, doing a lot of research, um, really digging into the science of oils and the difference between um, what each oil could do um, and the power of them. And once I became educated, starting to be able to share that knowledge with other people um, and knowing what each oil could do. And then the research out there is becoming stronger. Yeah, And, and I think it needs to be. It, it does. It really does. Because what what you do here is a lot of medical research that may say, oh, that doesn't work mm-hmm. or um, it's not FDA approved because they're so busy approving other things yeah. for medications. Yeah. So they can't 
they can't necessarily approve every essential oil company out there in in the way they would approve a medication because right. there are so many. I mean, right uh, at the end of, um, they're expecting the growth to be and put us in a, a market range where essential oils will be in 2030 um, at at a growth rate of um, 7.9% over where we are today. Um, and where we are right now is at $21.79 billion, mm-hmm. which is pretty astounding when you think about the sales. And it was really COVID that jumped us over that mark because mm-hmm. people started looking myself. for their own remedies. Mm-hmm. Um, and the antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties alone and antibacterial and antifungal and even antiparasitic, um, people are looking for being able to to handle things on their own, if you will, mm-hmm. and and not have to run to the doctors every two minutes mm-hmm. or not have to take a pill um, for everything. It seems nowadays you go to the doctor and you may be healthy and you walk out with three prescriptions. Uh-huh. And that's not the lifestyle choice that everybody wants. And something um, to be said about the pres- those prescriptions, I was just recently watching an episode on The Resident, and the woman was given one medication, and she was having side effects to that medication. <laughs> so they gave her a pill for the side effect, and she was having yes. side effects to that medication. So she they gave her another pill for her, that side effect. She ended up with 10 bottles just for original diagnosis and the diagnosis wasn't right and oh my god right (laughs) and i'm sorry to say but sometimes that happens because we trust our doctors so much and the conversation has to be said my primary doctor before she even became my primary doctor knew i went into holistic medicine and i would explore holistic medicine before then. And I think my story is a lot of uh, what other people go through, which is I, my primary before her wanted me to have bariatric surgery. Oh, wow. And I'm a little overweight, but nowhere near needing a bariatric surgery. And she would not even entertain any holistic Wow. She's very close minded. Yes. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt you. Um, I think No, I'm I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear your story and, and it it it's unfortunately a story I hear too often. Right, exactly. Um another thing that I think that the research needs to be there for is so that the doctors see, not just big pharma sees that The right essential oil, the right CBD can do numerous changes in mental health and personal health. And there's so many companies coming out right now that some of them are like, you know, putting things in there that don't belong in there and they're not being regulated. So I think the research also has to show that it has to be a pure essential oil and CBD. You're absolutely right. And that's one of the things I was going to say. I think the essential oils are a little bit more monitored and there is a little bit cleaner marketplace in essential oils. And CBD is a, a little bit, um, I don't, they're both in a situation where they're challenged mm-hmm. um, in the regulation. But the CBD market, um, is a little bit more challenged than essential oils. And I think because it's um, sought after differently Mm -hmm. and it's in the hemp and CBD market space. Mm -hmm. And with the approval of the medical marijuana in a lot of states, I know Ohio is a medical marijuana state as well. It's not a recreational marijuana state Mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a, it's gotten vastly improved Mm -hmm. with the CBD market. If you can, uh, if you can go in and purchase CBD through the the Mm dispensary, if you are in the situation that you can do that though, it's challenging. Mm. 
Well, well, let's let's talk about CBD because most people and, and we've done shows we've done shows on this before, but um, let's talk about CBD because CBD when po- when most people think CBD they think pot you know they think marijuana or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's yeah. let's clarify. CBD is what. CBD is um, it's cannabinoid oil. It is comes from the um, the 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 thing. It comes from a plant um, that is that produces the oil, the, the cannabinoid oil. Mm-hmm. So it is. It does not have the site the psychoactive effects that THC does. Mm-hmm. So it is. The, the in essence the same plant, but it's isolated differently. And it's grown differently. So mm-hmm. it doesn't have the cross pollination that THC does. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in a strictly um, laboratory environment where it's grown, it can be grown where CBD is not, does not contain THC. Mm-hmm. And in, in some environments, it contains less than the, than the regulated and uh, amount so it's it's like point um point three or point zero three i can't remember the exact number mm-hmm. i'm blanking on that um but in those situations as long as it's in that below that number it's safe to consume now um or to use it's used in beauty products it's used in um, pain rubs um, it's used in so many different facets mm-hmm. um it's an, it can be an amazing product. I know I have it in some skincare. I have it in my um, my rubs for my joints, for my severe arthritis that I have. Mm. And I, I swear by it. And I share it whenever I can. I, I get samples of it from the company I use um, that I trust that has a sustainable, it's a sustainable company. So they are replacing what they use from the environment. So I feel good about that. And I'm also able to say, look, I'm not going to fail a drug screen or my, you know, whoever I share it with is not going to fail a drug screen mm. if, if they're concerned about that. Um, but what, what I can say is in the marketplace, there are situations that CBD sometimes is not as clean. Right. So yeah. when you are recommending CBD to someone, you have to know the product and where it comes from. Right. Yeah. And that, and that was my next thing I wanted to say, because when, when it comes to CBD, there's a lot of places that sell CBD. I mean, heck, um, some places here you can get it in the gas station. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you want to get your your CBD from from the gas station, and definitely, definitely not Walmart. Okay. So, no. no. <laughs> because that, and that's what, that's what they do. They these companies come in and go. Oh yeah, we'll just we'll just put it in in the gas station. We'll put it in Walmart, and what you what you think you're getting, you're not really getting. And it's probably a very, very low. So the, the best thing to do is to buy it from somebody reputable, somebody you know about or somebody, you know, you could talk to people and find out who has the best CBD. But gas stations and Walmart, I definitely stay away from. Well, I think it's also important, mm-hmm. even though and we talked about not getting you high, but I think it's also on the other side where CBD from these other companies like Walmart and gas stations and even some pharmacies um, might not get you high. So you're thinking, Oh, this is the right one, but they have fillers. Yeah. Yeah. And the regulations right now say that we don't have to tell you what those fillers are. Yeah. Right. They don't have to list ingredients. They don't have to list. And that's one thing I would share is, always feel free to reach out to a company and ask for ingredients. And if they don't share them, don't use the product Mm -hmm. because you're not getting a clean product. Um, You know, and I can, I can say there are prominent players out in the market that uh, provide really clean, good products. So don't be scared to ask for that information and, and really do some research before you get into it. Because when you do find a good, clean product, it's so valuable. It's yeah. such a great resource and it can give you such amazing benefit. Um, it's so worth it. Yeah. It does take a little homework yeah. and, and just finding a good wellness coach or a good um, essential oil person is it, it just takes, you know, searching, you know, someone's profile or finding someone out there that knows about it. 
um, or talking to a friend who who may have someone in hand that they've worked with. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, it really can make a difference. That's like with me, you know, with, with working out, it's like you go into a, a vitamin store and there's 50 different brands of whey protein and a lot of that stuff, yeah. like you said, they, they add different fillers in it and stuff like that. Oh, you can buy in bulk and all that. And then that's just more filler and stuff like that. So it's the same thing. You got to find out who has, who, what is a good product to buy and what is, you know, because sometimes when I worked at like a, a, a sporting goods store, they had, they had like whey protein there, but the bottles were all dusty and all that, and, you know, and I shouldn't have did this, but people came in going, Writing. I'm going to buy this. I'm like, you don't want to buy your supplements here. Go to a supplement store. Go to somebody who knows what this stuff's been sitting here forever. You don't even know what you're getting. You know? And not GNC. No. Yeah. <laughs> not GNC. Well, no, you did the right thing for personal um, knowledge, right? I yeah. think you would have probably not lived with yourself if you had, had told those. Um, but I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> the, uh, it, the one thing I can share is that you know, CBD changed my arthritis. It changed how I felt. It changed how I was able to move. It changed my swelling in my knee. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's delayed a, a knee replacement for me. Had I started with something that I didn't know was reputable, I wouldn't be in the same place. Yeah. Had I started my essential oil journey with, with pharmacy essential oils in a clear bottle that yeah. were being diluted from the sun and from UV exposure, yeah. I wouldn't be where I was today. I wouldn't have the belief and knowledge that they are making a difference mm-hmm. in my life and in my family's life. Um, and I wouldn't be, you know, a wellness coach and a lifestyle coach today. I think it's a big difference in your first exposure to those the essential oils and to CBD and hemp even. And if, if you are a, a, a marijuana user, even to marijuana. I mean, if you're getting it from a dispensary versus a, a friend, it's going to make a big difference. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's the thing too. And, and so how do you, how do you work with somebody? Somebody comes in going, Hey, I have this pain, blah, blah, blah. Um, I've heard about, I've, I've been taking this medication. The doctor prescribes, I don't really like it. Where, how, how do you get started in, in essential oil? What, what would you, what would you say to this person take peppermint first? Or, I mean, how, how would you go about ex- ass- assessing them and then uh, getting them on the right path to what they need to go to? I would say where they feel most comfortable. Yeah. It's meeting them where, where they're comfortable. Sometimes um, it's about providing with them with some samples. Um, if I'm able to do that, you know, I do get samples from, I order them from my company that I work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and knowing that they're clean, um, that's something that I do, um, because I believe in the products that I have on hand. Um, if I don't, I tell them, you know, I want you to find, um, essential oils that come in, you know, in, in a dark bottle and, you know, a bottle that's, um, amber colored or blue colored because UV exposure and light will, yeah. Um, affect that essential oil and I'll, I'll give them names of different companies that are good um, essential oil um, companies that I know will be clean and I'll, I'll, I'll provide them with, you know, five or five or six names of companies that I think are clean and in a variety of price ranges, but also it's important for me that they're sustainable companies that they're, yes. they're providing back because it is so depleting of the environment to create essential oils. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a, a key thing for me as well is that is that company replenishing the resources to the environment that they're taking out? Um, you know, it takes a whole, a whole lot of roses to make rose essential oh, oil my. and that's lavender essential drop. oil is <laughs> insane to make la- lavender essential oil. Mm-hmm. So it's really about the big picture um, in knowing that when I'm, making a recommendation to someone that I'm not just making it from, I think this works, that it's coming from a foundational knowledge. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I'm taking information that I've collected over the years from multiple books. It's not just coming from one source. Right. It's coming from multiple resources um, of collective knowledge. And that's how I'm making those recommendations um, right. along with, my personal usage knowledge mm-hmm. um, and building on that would mm-hmm. be how I'd make that recommendation. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's like with CBD, you know, one, one of the things like I was never, I was never a big marijuana user, not, even in the entertainment business, believe it or not, you know, when I used to, when I used to be in the entertainment business, uh, smoking marijuana never got to me, but you know, when I, when I see the CBD and I, you know, I've tried some gummies and stuff like that, but the thing with those gummies, they bring me down way, way down the, further than I want to be. A little, little sleepy, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, little, well, <laughs> Well, like right now I'm, you know, I'm upbeat, but they just brought me down to just like where I just wanted to just like sit there, you know, I was like, nah, I don't, I don't really need block. it. But I know, I know a lot of people who swear by it, you know, if they have trouble sleeping, they, they'd swear by CBD, you know, for, for sleep. Yeah, it, it can be very effective for insomnia. It can be, um, you know, I know we have oral, the oral tincture that is available, um, but it, it's about finding the right dosage as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find gummies um, to be challenging in any capacity of medication because they're so hard to know how your body is going to digest them and absorb them. Right. Um, so sublingual so is an easier way to take it. So under the tongue, um, because it's, it gets into your bloodstream faster and you can control the dosing a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's an easier way to take it. Um, and, and you can really control the dosing differently. So mixing it with MCT oil is another way to control it a little differently because mm-hmm. um, it absorbs differently in your body. But gummies are challenging, and um, they're not something I recommend because they are absorbed so differently by everyone. Mm-hmm. And it really comes down to how quickly you metabolize something, how quickly it digests in your system and, and not, not being a doctor, not being someone who says, you know, you have this condition or you have that condition. I'm very careful about making a recommendation to someone. If they say, I've been to the doctor, they told me I have this condition. Then I'm comfortable saying, okay, well, based on what you've told me, you know, I can tell you that these essential oils may help with symptoms. They may help with some relief for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And in not offering a cure or not offering um, um, medical advice, but offering them assistance, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. I think mm, that is so important to understand that regulations mm, for essential oils and CBD need to be in place um, for body weight or size of the person. Um, little, you know, a little tiny one, all the way up to our elderly. Yes. Yes. Um, especially when it comes to children. I mean, essential oils in children are, um, can be toxic mix if you're not very careful. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then even for animals and pets, having, you know, diffuser or having them around pets, um, can be challenging. I know we have a dog and we have reptiles. Um, so it's a little different in our house when we, our reptiles are on the second floor. So our first floor, we can diffuse pretty liberally. His dogs are pretty, it's a big dog, so it's, it's a little bit easier. Uh, but our second floor, we have to be very careful because um, we have four bearded dragons. So they have a very limited number of essential oils they can be around. Um, so we can't diffuse in our bedrooms where the bearded dragons are, except for lemon and grapefruit and frankincense, mm-hmm. um, which are not great for sleeping, but... Um, except for frankincense, Mm -hmm. which is a personal favorite of mine, but it's not inexpensive. (laughs) Right. No, not frankincense. (laughs) I think that's another thing that you just hit the nail on the head. They're expensive for a reason, especially if they're reasonably. The quality ones are. Good quality ones are. And that's why, as Chris said, don't buy them from Walmart. You can give frankincense Mm -hmm. for $5. That's, that's, not frankincense. That is nothing, something that should even touch your body, let alone diffuse in the air. And you're going to have some sort of reaction. Yeah. You're going to have a skin reaction. You're going to have a breathing reaction. It's going to be detrimental to your health because it's a perfume mm-hmm. and it's got fragrance in it. And that's a toxic, toxic environmental hazard. Yeah. Mm. So it, it can be kind of scary and it's such a large market share. Mm-hmm. It's astounding um, when you look at it. It just really, the growth, I mean, it's projected to grow so fast. And, yeah. and I mean, it's used in medical, it's used in food and beverage, it's used in spa and relaxation, it's used in cleaning and home. It's, it's yes. so versatile. 
and even CBD is used in those markets. Yeah. It's just a, a really astounding marketplace. Mm-hmm. And it's used in pharmaceuticals. And so when it's used in pharmaceuticals, it makes you think we're on to something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Really. And uh, in Europe and Asia are really the largest marketplace right now, mm-hmm. but the U.S. is not far behind. Now, really I girl. was asked by a patient what I did with my pain. And I said, I use essential oils and CBD. And they're like, but CBD is a gateway drug. What is your thoughts on gateway that? Gateway to what? Right. Gateway to what? <laughs> <laughs> gateway to pain relief? <laughs> I think that's um I think that's someone's lack of knowledge. I think it's a little bit of um misinformation. Yep. There is if if that person was introduced to an unclean C B D Maybe it was a gateway, um, but I think I think that's um, naivete, if you will. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's because I'm 15 years in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, but not with CBD. I'm probably five years in with CBD. Mm-hmm. Um. But like I said, I use um, CBD in my skincare. Um, uh, it's a beauty serum, if you will. Um, I use the word beauty loosely, but that's what it's called. <laughs> um, it's a, a facial uh, serum. Um, and uh, I have the oral tincture. And then I have a, a muscle rub cream. And um, those are my primary uses of CBD. But... Um, I have no issue about sharing it and giving it to others. And um, my husband has a very strict drug policy at his work. And I have no problem with putting it on him or using it, letting him use it. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's never failed a drug screen. So I don't know how it could be a gateway drug. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing too, with, with, with it becoming more legalized and more uh, states uh, approving it. Um, there's going to be a lot of copycatters out there, you know, within the future. There's, you know, it's just like um, a lot of generic brands and stuff like that. And you're going to have to be more, more aware and more, more conscious of what you're buying and, and who you're buying from. So how do you, how do you see that as far as the future, as far as all the copycats that are going to be coming out there? Like, Hey, we can get in the CBD business. I think it's a scary place. Yeah. And I really think that, we need to lean heavy on government regulation and really push for government regulation. Mm. And, you know, I hate that we have to do that. I hate it. Um, But if that's the way we have to get it regulated, if that's the way we have to make sure it's clean, then that's what we have to do. Um, I know getting something through um, regulation or regulatory efforts in um, some other countries is not, as difficult as it is in the United States. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, you know, certain drugs, like when the pandemic started getting the vaccines through, it went very quickly. Um, So when it's necessary, they can push things through very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, when it's not, it seems like it takes 10 years. Um, And it's very challenging. I think if they just really pushed and said, here are some standards. These are what we expect. And they put a definition around it. It would, it would really define the marketplace and clean things up very quickly. Mm-hmm. And it's challenging to me that they have gone this far um, and let it go this long without that. It, yeah. it, it really lends um, some discredit to the, the field. And I, I don't appreciate that because, um, you know, knowing that there is, validity to Eastern medicine. I mean, it's, it's been around before Western has, oh, yeah. and it's still going. Um, I mean, you know, I think of, you know, all the seeds oil and then all the recipe for copycat seeds oils out there, um, and the cleaners and how effective they are and how they got their start and how they got their name. Um, in fact that, you know, these were the oils they used to fight off the plague and, you know, the thieves would steal, mm. um, and, from the dead and they never got the plague because they used this group of five oils Mm -hmm. um, on their 
bodies to protect themselves from the plague. Mm-hmm. And, and it's still used today. Um, and back then they didn't have the, the medications we have today to fight off um, the, the germs and the bacteria and the, the viruses. Um, so I just, I go back and say, look back in time and see what's worked. What have we had success with? Um, and it, it often takes looking back in history to predict the future. And uh, I think we're going to find that more and more we're going to see the past come back relevant in our future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's hope for that. <laughs> because that's the thing with, with the um, with the knockoffs and all that. And how do we, you know, like I said, you know, it's one of those things where you're going to get a lot of generic companies. And what we mean by no regulations is somebody can just, you know, grab a bottle of whatever, put sugar in it and say, oh, yeah, CBD and write CBD on it and have it. And that's really, really um, ripping off the consumer, you know, because what they think they're getting, they're not getting. It's just straight theft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I definitely, definitely see that in the supplement market, too, you know. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of a lot of um, essential oils and, and CBD even is, the gift of of turning them into medications and turning them into things that can treat um, a variety of things. I I know there's uh, thyroid medicines and things that can come out of um, essential oils and um, endocrine systems can be treated and and immunity systems can be treated. Um, So there are things that can be changed. I I don't know that they can be cured. Um, There are things that can be adjusted um, by taking certain supplements. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you may find that that's hocus pocus and you may find that you believe in it. Um, and you may say it's a placebo, but at the end of the day, it's about a personal choice. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the doctor and you end up with 10 prescriptions because you walked in with one ailment, that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Um, but what, what is that doing to your health long term? Mm -hmm. I look at the side effects on the, advertisements and yes. it's so scary <laughs> I you know and i'm heard this thing on shock. TikTok from uh, this woman from europe and she said she never ever seen a commercial on medication until she came to america and she was yeah they don't have them in europe and they don't have them in canada yeah she was talking about what a happy way to say all the side effects that could scare you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is a happy way to say, yeah, you're going to have, uh, I mean, I heard one that was like, you're going to have greasy stools and side effects. And I was like, oh, dear God, yeah. what, what is that? And why would you take it? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's disturbing. I mean, and it, with the condition I have, I tend to have every reaction possible. I mean, I'm allergic to almost every medication on the market. And so if there's a side effect, I don't even read the side effects on a bottle typically because mm-hmm. I have them. I, I typically end up with the side effect. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm at a point where I'm trying to get off all medications. I can't ever be off all medication. Um, I'm lucky enough to receive plasma. Um, donor plasma that I give myself through infusions every Friday. Um, I don't necessarily see that as a medication. I see that as a life-saving gift. Mm. Um, But all the equipment that comes with it is just mind-boggling. And I just think about, wouldn't it be so freeing not to have all of this? Wouldn't it be so freeing to not have to take a bunch of pills in the morning and not to have to take all this. So I've actually been working with the Cleveland clinic, um, in their functional medicine to free myself of that. And they've put me on a gluten-free dairy-free diet. Um, and I'm allergic to corn, so I don't get corn either. Mm. Um, and I've chose to go chosen to go sugar-free and it has changed everything. Mm. I've been able to drop all my weight for being, having a thyroid disorder. Um, and it was almost instantaneous. Um, the lifestyle change has really changed a lot for me. I've gotten off of a lot of medications that cost, coupled with the essential oil use and 
the CBD use has been remarkable. I don't have to take arthritis medicine anymore. I don't have to put arthritis cream on that's not holistic. Um, It's been really freeing. Um, I don't have to take any um, thyroid medication. And I don't have side effects. I don't have weird, freaky things happening with my body. Yes. And um, I went through a really challenging journey before I was diagnosed with my terminal illness. And it was, it was bad. It got really dark. Mm. And um, it was the essential oils that turned everything around. Yeah. So um, it was remarkable. Mm-hmm. And I went in saying, I don't really have anything to lose. Right. Mm-hmm. And I didn't believe it would work. <laughs> I honest to God, this is like, it's never going to happen. I mean, I've been to eight doctors and, you know, been through the ringer. And if they couldn't figure out, why is this little bottle going to help me? Yes. Mm-hmm. Little expensive it, it bottle. Really, That's where I was. Yeah, big, <laughs> seriously. I, yeah. You're no kidding. Um, and I, I look back and here my sister was in the essential oil market and I didn't even go to her. I went to someone else mm-hmm. because I was so convinced it wouldn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was dead wrong, mm-hmm. dead wrong. Mm-hmm. And I just think if I had started a little earlier, but I had to learn the hard way. Yep. And I'm finding that a lot of times it takes going through something or having kind of a aha moment yourself to really make the change. Or even there's got to be something better. There's got to be something better than what I'm sitting in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, this is, uh, it's come to an end. Uh, a really interesting conversation, uh, Rochelle, and I'll let Rach uh, close us out. Well, you guys would come to an end. Um, I've been wanting to do this with her for so long. Um, I think the first time we reached out to each other was over a year ago. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit, but it's been great. Yeah. Um, but I really wanted you guys to know the truth and really put it in your lives. Um, until next time, have a great one. Take it easy.